Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome to FAIR TV. Let's look at some of the things we've seen in the news this week. Of course, the big news is that Mitt Romney selected Wisconsin Republican Congressman Paul Ryan as his running mate. What did we learn about Paul Ryan? Well, he's fit, he's handsome, charming, good with a bow, and he apparently catches fish with his bare hands. The real story about Paul Ryan, though, is that he is a budget wonk. From the Washington Post, Ryan, like Romney, is a numbers person who likes to break down problems and solve them after digesting reams of data. The CBS Evening News told viewers that Ryan has made curbing the national debt his mantra. This tone isn't anything new. Paul Ryan's been a media darling for the past two years, as we've been treated to stories about his Eagle Scout demeanor and his piercing blue eyes. But the not-so-hidden truth about Paul Ryan's budgets, though, is that, as many critics have pointed out, the supposed wonk's numbers just don't add up. His proposed cuts to non-military discretionary spending are basically mathematically impossible. He makes unrealistic assumptions about how his tax cuts for the wealthy will massively reduce unemployment. And for all the hubbub about slashing the debt, his budget actually doesn't do much of that anyway. So why does the press still consider him such a wonk? That is a mystery. There are plenty of problems, of course, with that kind of campaign coverage. The main issue for the media often comes down to a failure to fact check. Take Mitt Romney's claim on the campaign trail and now in a new TV ad that the Obama White House is about to gut the work requirements in the 1996 so-called welfare reform law, apparently in order to hand out free money. As the ad puts it, they just send you the welfare check. Now, various independent fact-checking operations have weighed in on this, and they've rendered their verdict. The claim is a gross distortion. What the White House is doing is granting some states waivers on the current job requirements in exchange for different job requirements. The aim of the policy isn't changing at all, so the ad is basically false. But if you watched the PBS NewsHour segment about this on August 9th, you probably had trouble telling up from down. The show featured two experts. One, Peter Edelman from Georgetown, took the view that the misleading ad was, in fact, misleading. The other guest was Robert Rector from the Right Wing Heritage Foundation. He said Romney's claims were perfectly, absolutely accurate. Host Judy Woodruff did very little to clear things up, and viewers were probably left scratching their heads over the whole thing. Woodruff mentioned in the segment that poverty is rarely discussed on the national political stage. That is true. Discussing it this way is hardly better than silence. And finally, you might not be an expert in media ethics, but you'd probably agree that a show about finance and business sponsored exclusively by one bank has an obvious conflict. The fact that that show is on public radio makes the arrangement all the more curious. And the fact that the host of that show also makes money giving speeches to the financial institutions he covers, well, that's not supposed to be how things work. But that's precisely how things work for Adam Davidson. He's the host of NPR's Planet Money, and he's a columnist for the New York Times Magazine. His program's exclusive underwriter is Ally Bank, a subsidiary of the company formerly known as a GMAC, a major player in the mortgage fraud scandals. Davidson's ethical problems have been documented by a journalistic group called The Shame Project, which wondered how The Times and NPR squares these conflicts with its ethical standards. NPR eventually issued a statement in response saying that Davidson's speaking gigs are discussed with his editors. Huh. The thing about ethics policies is that they're supposed to be, at the very least, consistent. So let's compare this Davidson case to another, journalist Lisa Simeone. After discovering that she participated in some Occupy DC activism, she was removed as the host of the public radio show Soundprint. NPR says it had nothing to do with that decision. The show says it was applying NPR's ethics code. She also hosted a public radio opera program. The station that produced it decided that her political activities would not inhibit her ability to tell listeners what music they were listening to. NPR then promptly stopped distributing that program. Or consider freelance producer Caitlin Curran. She lost a job at Public Radio International after she was photographed at a protest holding up a sign denouncing Wall Street mortgage shenanigans. Okay, so protesting Wall Street is not okay, 
but getting big bucks for giving speeches to the bankers that you cover, well, that's apparently just fine in big-time public radio. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for joining us this week on FAIR TV.